scene. Gunfire breaking out at a municipal center late today, a courthouse locked down. We have late reporting. The other scare, the high school graduation day, the school suddenly on lockdown. Parents and families inside the school. The flooding emergency across several states, the levee failing tonight, and the new images now emerging. Part of this high school ripped away. Your money tonight, the Dow plummeting this Friday. Swift reaction to President Trump and his surprise move on tariffs and Mexico. What this could mean for car prices in America, even if the car is made here. The alarming mystery in North Korea tonight now growing. The men who came to the White House to negotiate has one been killed, the other sentenced to hard labor. Amid an unconfirmed report, several others might be dead too. What the Trump administration is now saying tonight. The American woman who says she was beaten while on vacation at a popular resort. Tonight, what authorities have confirmed. The controversial student takedown with the boy's family is now demanding. Disturbing new clues tonight in the search for a missing mother of five. News this evening on CBD, the compound extracted from marijuana used in oils. What the FDA is now saying. Nearly $800 million up for grabs this weekend, feeling lucky. And they ran out of words. Who is our person of the week? This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Friday night. And we begin tonight with that active scene right now. Police responding to an active shooter at a municipal building, a courthouse locked down. There are reports of multiple injuries tonight. The images coming in at this hour, the gunman opening fire at that municipal center. Authorities saying a number of people have been hospitalized already. Ambulance is rushing to the scene. The FBI sending agents at this hour, and there is news involving the alleged shooter. ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas leading us off. Because of the breaking situation, we're having an audio challenge there, Pierre. What are sources telling you? I know they're on the scene right now. Well, David, the police are all over the scene. They're still canvassing the building. We've not yet identified the shooter. We still have no idea about motive. It was the middle of the workday when this happened. And, George, and David, we, we have the situation now where we have so many of these incidents. Police know how to respond. They, want, they know what to do. They tell people to shelter in place. But it was a very active scene from the broadcast to fire that we were listening to. We heard police encountering the shooter, hearing shots being fired, knowing the victims were injured. David, a very volatile, volatile situation. Here, Thomas, when you know more, you'll bring it to us. Thank you. We're also following another active scene late today, this time in Santa Rosa, California. A scare at a high school just hours before graduation. Police responding to reports of a student at the school armed with a gun. Students and family members told to shelter in place while officers searched the campus. A junior college nearby was also placed on lockdown. Authorities there say that student is in custody tonight. Now to the other emergency unfolding at this hour, the flooding emergency. And there are new watches for severe weather again this Friday night from Texas to North Carolina this weekend. We have the latest track and they don't need this. There is record flooding already and evacuations in Arkansas tonight. The Arkansas River breaching a levee about 60 miles outside Little Rock. A woman was rescued after flooding swept her vehicle off the road in Searcy County. We time this out for you as we start this weekend and ABC's Victor Akendo is in the storm zone. Tonight, a major American waterway is bursting at the seams. The Arkansas River breaching at least a 200-foot hole in a levee northwest of Little Rock. It started out only a few feet wide, but it has actually grown significantly since. It's really turning into a dangerous situation. The breach triggering a flash flood warning. The 200 feet is too wide to repair, and the water is going too fast. So we can't repair it. Residents racing to protect homes and businesses. Workers telling us they have 15 to 20,000 sandbags thanks to more than 200 volunteers. Officials already going door to door, urging people in more than 150 homes to get out. With more water on the way, more water what on can the you way. do? Pray. Keep working and pray. North of Little Rock, this woman rescued from her vehicle, floodwaters washing it off the road Thursday. The region plagued by storms for weeks. Surveillance video showing the moment winds ripped the roof off this high school in Corning, Arkansas. Miles upstream in Oklahoma, for many, the only way to get around is by boat. Near Tulsa, the Keystone Lake Reservoir inundated, releasing water at the fastest rate in decades. Quite a picture. Victor Akendo joins us now along the Arkansas River tonight, just upstream from that levee break. And Victor, what are officials telling you right now? 
David, the mayor urging residents not to get in this water. He called the current phenomenal. He said that it's also carrying pollutants all the way from Oklahoma. That breach levy can't be replaced until the water recedes. And with more rain in the forecast, they're likely looking at flooding here for the next two weeks. David. Victor Akendo tonight. Victor, thank you. So let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z. And Ginger, you're watching more rain on the way, and they don't need it. And they're going to get it. David, new numbers tonight coming in. 20 to 30 inch rainfall totals for this month. That is four times some of the main numbers or average for Kansas and Oklahoma. And of course, you look at the map. It's the Arkansas River, the Missouri River, and the Mississippi with flood warnings. That are all, that's all the green you see on the map. So, so many towns concerned going into this weekend. From Wichita to Tulsa, unfortunately, that's where we'll see series of storms bringing up to four inches into early next week. Severe thunderstorm watches on tonight more than 60 severe storm or 45 exactly right now uh, Virginia North Carolina tomorrow Chicago South Bend Springfield Missouri all have to watch for damaging wind and hail David Ginger Z with us on a Friday night Ginger thank you now to your money tonight the Dow plummeting to end the week swift reaction to President Trump's surprise threat to increase tariffs on Mexico the Dow plunging today more than 354 points closing below 25,000 for the first time since January the president threatening 5% tariffs on all Mexican products entering the U.S. It could affect prices on cars, even cars made in America, washing machines, and, of course, produce at the grocery store. ABC's chief White House correspondent Jonathan Carl tonight on what the president is demanding in return. In a move that surprised his own top advisors, the president decided to act after a group of more than 1,000 migrants crossed the border illegally near El Paso on Wednesday. The administration says it's the largest group of migrants ever detained at the border. Mexico has taken advantage of the United States for decades, Trump declared via Twitter. Time for them to finally do what must be done. The White House says the tariffs will begin as a tax of 5% on all goods that cross the border, adding another 5% every month until hitting 25% in October. The tariffs would remain in place until Mexico does more to stop the flow of migrants. But it's unclear exactly what they're required to do. This is actually a brilliant move by the president. This will get everybody's attention in Mexico. The economic impact will be felt quickly in the United States, increasing the costs of consumer goods ranging from washing machines to avocados. And because so many auto parts come from Mexico, the tariffs could increase the price of vehicles in the United States by an estimated $1,300 per car. All right, so let's get to Jonathan Carl live at the White House tonight. And the president with those surprise tariffs, John, how is Mexico responding tonight? Well, the Mexican foreign minister says he is coming to Washington next week to meet, to meet with Secretary of State Pompeo. And he spoke today over the phone with Pompeo and with Jared Kushner, expressing Mexico's strong concern uh, with these tariffs. As he said via Twitter, we will be firm and defend the dignity of Mexico. David? John Carl, rounding out the week at the White House. John, thank you. And next tonight, here the dramatic scene unfolding outside the U.S. Embassy tonight in Honduras. The main entrance burned by protesters setting tires on fire right in front of the building. Demonstrators are angry over the Honduran government's plans to privatize education and health care. Americans there have been told to remain indoors during the protests. It is still unclear tonight why the U.S. Embassy is in fact being targeted. We move on now to the startling new headline out of North Korea tonight. The U.S. is investigating that unconfirmed report claiming Kim Jong-un has purged his nuclear negotiating team, executing five top officials for the failed summit with President Trump. In fact, that, that former North Korean spy master who delivered that letter to President Trump at the White House reportedly sent to forced labor. How is the Trump administration responding? ABC senior national correspondent Terry Moran tonight. Tonight, there are reports that the lives of these two top North Korean officials seen here in the Oval Office in January may be in jeopardy or over because of Kim Jong-un's fury. The report coming out of the region, impossible to confirm, suggests that the young tyrant turned on his own team, reportedly executing his lead negotiator and four foreign ministry officials and sending his former right-hand man, seen here delivering letters to President Trump in Washington to one of North Korea's notoriously brutal forced labor camps, along with the lead translator in the talks. All this because Kim was furious over the collapse of his summit with President Trump in Hanoi in February. Sometimes you have to walk, and uh, this was just one of those times. Kim was so embarrassed, he fired off missiles. Earlier this week, President Trump, who has said he and Kim fell in love, 
Said even the missiles didn't bother him. You're not bothered at all by the small missiles. No, I'm not. I am personally not. Said he wasn't bothered by the moves of uh, Kim Jong Un. We're with Terry Moran live now from Washington. We heard what the president there said days ago about the North Korean dictator. Any word from the president or the administration tonight? Well, not yet from the president, David. Secretary of State Pompeo says the U.S. government is investigating, but a few weeks ago he told ABC News uh, that the next time he negotiates with North Korea, his counterpart is likely to be someone else. David? Terry Moran with us live tonight as well. Thanks, Terry. Next tonight, the American tourist claiming she was brutally attacked in the Dominican Republic at a popular resort. Tammy Lawrence Daly says she was badly beaten at that resort while on vacation with her husband earlier this year. She says she was walking alone and suddenly was dragged into a maintenance room. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. It was supposed to be a dream getaway to an all-inclusive resort in the Dominican Republic, but tonight, Tammy Lawrence Daly is speaking out after a brutal attack, hoping to protect other women. She, her husband, and two friends were at the Majestic Elegance Resort in Punta Cana in January, when she says she went out alone for a late-night snack and claims she was attacked by a man wearing a resort uniform. He just plowed into my back. Um, and I just remember that grunt that he made when he hit me. It's like in my nightmares. He, uh, at that point, started choking me, strangling me. She says the attacker dragged her into a maintenance room, then down into a basement, where she says he left her for dead. All I could think of was that my husband was going to find me dead with my head bashed in. Tammy says she was discovered eight hours later. Tonight, she has this message. It's not safe. It's not safe for women to be alone, to walk alone. They have to walk with somebody else. And David, police say they are investigating and they're looking at surveillance video. They say they've questioned 10 people, but nobody has been arrested. We've reached out to the resort, but have not heard back. David. All right, Gio, thank you. And now to the growing outrage over the violent takedown of a special education student in New Mexico. Newly released body cam video tonight showing a deputy at the high school tasing the 15-year-old boy. The images are disturbing and what that boy's family is now demanding. Here's ABC's Adrian Bankert. So much. Tonight, outrage and an investigation after a violent confrontation between a New Mexico high school student and a sheriff's deputy ends with the student tased. It all began after the 15-year-old allegedly refused to be searched. Police claim he was observed exchanging possible drug paraphernalia. Oh, he's refusing? That's fine. I'll put his little in handcuffs and take him to Santa Fe. Stand up so I can. Turn around. You gonna be cooperative or uncooperative? What do you think I'm doing? Fantastic, turn around. That turn teen is heard calling the deputy a name just before he slammed on a desk. I'm gonna tase you. The boy screams in pain as he's tased three times. Get on the ground. Later charged with resisting arrest and other offenses. Tonight, his family is taking legal action. Their attorney releasing a statement saying the child has a special education plan that requires de escalation before the school imposes any discipline. David, the sheriff's office says this case is under review and that that deputy is still on regular patrols. David? Adrian Bankert reporting in. Thank you. There are new developments tonight in the expanding search for that missing mother of five in New Canaan, Connecticut. Police reportedly finding blood in the home that she was renting. She vanished without a trace after dropping off her children at school and was locked in a bitter divorce battle. ABC's Whit Johnson in New Canaan again tonight. Tonight, the week-long desperate search for missing mother of five Jennifer Dulos is expanding. Authorities in Hartford, Connecticut looking for clues in a storm drain turning up nothing. Police crossing state lines into Pound Ridge, New York, searching a family home. And in New Canaan, where according to the Hartford Current, investigators found traces of blood at Dulos's rental property. The 50-year-old had been locked in a two-year bitter custody battle with her estranged husband, Fotis Dulos. And divorce filings both making vicious accusations. Jennifer claiming, I am terrified for my family's safety. He is dangerous. Fotis strongly denying any threatening behavior. We're all incredibly concerned, but we are very hopeful that Jennifer will come back to us safe and sound. Tonight, police are not naming any suspects. Those five children, according to court documents, are with a relative protected by an armed guard.
David? Whit Johnson tonight. Thank you, Whit. And there was a ruling late today in the abortion showdown in Missouri. A judge today deciding the state's only clinic providing abortions will remain open for now. Planned Parenthood's license had been set to expire at midnight. The facility will now stay open until at least a court hearing next week. And new images tonight.